Um, hello, uh, my name is Louise Humphreys and I am a registered ODP and lecturer on the Operating Department Practice um, Programme, as well as also the Admissions Tutor. Firstly, I'd like to say welcome to the Operating Department Practice at the University of Leicester. Um, operating Department Practice is part of the School of Healthcare, which was um, established in 2019. Um, it's part of great groundbreaking courses in midwifery, nursing, ODP, physiotherapy, diagnostic radiography and pharmacology, which is quite new um, to the school. Um, the ODP transferred from the medical school when the School of Healthcare was um, um, born. There's all of these departments have all got planned growth. Um, so the plans for the future are to um, gain more subjects and more students. And each programme has um, dedicated teams of staff who are all registered within their own profession and understand all of the healthcare roles um, of what we are teaching. Um, you'll see on your screens, there's a list of the courses that we offer. So midwifery with leadership, uh, Master of Science, nursing with leadership, operating department practice, which is a Bachelor of Science, physiotherapy Bachelor of Science, a physiotherapy foundation year, um, diagnostic radiography and a Master of Pharmacy. So the question, why study at Leicester? Um, we have been a specialist provider of the operating department practice for over 40 years and we have well established clinical partnerships with all of the hospitals that we deal with. Our students, um, our friendly group sizes of a maximum of 30 to 40, which in ensures that us as the lecturers get to know the students and likewise our students get to know us quite well. We offer two intakes a year, um, both in spring and autumn, which is April and the usual September intake, which is quite different to some of the other universities out there. So that's one of our, our little um, special ideas. Um, and we also offer the degree apprenticeship. Um, the degree apprenticeship um, is something that you don't necessarily actually apply to the university. You have to apply via um, the NHS hospitals. Um, they will offer and advertise and then the students come to the university and study alongside doing exactly the same course as your traditional direct entry student. We're very proud of our high quality educational facilities. We have um, two specific classrooms, which are our own ODP um, classrooms. And we also have a practical room um, which is set out as an operating theatre so that students can actually gain experience in what it's going to be like in the clinical setting. Um, the Healthcare Professions Council and also the College of Operating Department Practitioners um, have both approved and validated our course and we follow the um, curriculum advised by the College of Operating Department Practitioners. We're known as one of the top providers of operating department practice degree in the country, which is something that we're all very, very proud of. And uh, we have a high average, which is 83% of student positivity in the 2023 National Student Survey. The survey has changed slightly this year and as opposed to it being st um, student satisfaction, it is now student positivity. Obviously, we want to, um, we're not happy with 83%. We want that to be 90% and we're doing everything we can to strive to um, achieve that. Uh, we've had a very recent Ofsted new provider visit, which is um, a visit to the university because of us offering the apprenticeship and therefore Ofsted have um, visited us and we have scored um, quite favourably um, within this um, visit. So the style of learning that we offer here at um, the University of Leicester, we have a variety of teaching styles and inputs. So a lot of the lecturers um, will teach in different ways. We have seminars. We don't obviously have big groups. We have um, the smaller groups. We'll do group work. We do practical um, work as well in the practical room and different styles and different types of teaching. Um, we have a mixture of assessment methods. 
those including um, authentic, authentic clinical assessments, we'll have exams, we have um, uh, oral exams such as fivers, um, case studies to write assignments like a traditional assignment and there's different um, online tests. So we have quite a good mixture to enable it to be inclusive for all, all students. Um, the clinical assessments are carried out within the clinical um, areas of the hospitals and therefore are authentic because they are practicing and that each student is practicing as, as a um, ODP. Um, we also have an electronic personal portfolio, which the student uses an iPad, which are provided by the university on a long term loan. Um, and the whole personal portfolio is, is within that. And likewise, anything that is reached is then um, documented and signed within this um, portfolio. So our staff. All of our academic staff are registered ODPs and we're all experts within the field and we have a combined experience of well over 120 years, although that could possibly be getting towards the 200 years as we've had some new more uh, more new staff start. Students are supported by lead mentors when they're in clinical placement. Um, and again, we have a very good relationship with the lead mentors in the clinical placements to support our students and work together. We also network with national bodies and organisations in the field of operating department practice um, to ensure that we're all kept up to date and um, with what is happening in the educational field of operating department practice. Our course structure. Um, it is a three year Bachelor of Science degree um, and we have a 65% clinical placement versus a 35% um, academic split. This is quite different to um, some of our other, some of the other universities that offer the operating department practice um, degree um, in that we focus very heavily on um, clinical practice um, to ensure that our students are um, ready for um, placement and ready for um, to start their role once they are qualified. We have five compulsory modules each year. We don't offer any um, non-compulsory modules. It is just purely the compulsory modules and our course differs with some other universities in the fact that it is an all year round 48 week program. We don't have the summer, uh, we don't have standard semesters and we don't have the long summer break um, as some of the programmes do. Um, the timetables are split into study block weeks and clinical placement weeks and when a student actually starts with us they will have their plan um, for the whole three years of the programme. That way they know where they're going to be for the whole three years whilst they are studying with us. Um, study block weeks are 26 hours of learning. Um, so they are Monday to Friday um, and students are in um, every day with its 100% um, compulsory attendance. And then the placement weeks where they're actually in the hospital in the clinical area are 30 hours per week. So a brief course outline. Um, you can see in front of you there's year one, year two and year three and year one is a foundation year where you have we cover the foundations of operating department practice. We then start to separate into the separate roles. So the foundations of surgical practice, anaesthetic practice, then practice and development progression one, and then the foundations of professional practice in healthcare. This is a very important part of the course as once you are qualified, you are going to be a professional member of staff that is registered. Year two then starts to focus on more specialised areas. So we look at specialist practice, post anaesthetic practice, critical care and non elective practice, meaning emergency work. Again, practice development and progression um, two for the second year and again, second year development of professional practice in healthcare. Year three, um, this is where 
a lot more of the enhancements come in. So there's enhanced practice and um, you gain information and practice on clinical leadership and management roles, um, advanced professional practice in healthcare, a third year of practice development and then um, this year is seen with the what is called the major project, um, which is a large piece of work that's split into two, which is what a lot of other courses will class as um, a dissertation. So academic topics that we will cover during the course, um, anatomy and physiology, um, operative technology, so the technology behind the different operative procedures and operative equipment that is used within um, a modern operating theatre. The anaesthetics and surgery, we're going to quite a lot of detail, as you can imagine, into both of those. Pharmacology is looked at because um, we're dealing with um, different types of drugs for different things at all times and supporting the anaesthetist on um, the anaesthetic side. We look into the health and safety of both the staff members, patients and everybody that is involved within the theatre environment and also infection control. Patient care is one of our large areas that we look into because the patient is the number one important person within that operating theatre. Legal and ethical issues, we have to look at the ethical side of surgery and also the legal side of both what we are actually doing and um, what, what staff are doing and also the legal side of things like consent. Policy and procedure is a very important part because obviously we are deemed and have to follow strict policies and procedures um, that are both clinical and um, just from the hospital, but also from our governing bodies. We then look at um, recovery, which is the recovery of a patient post surgery, um, post anaesthetic. And obviously then there's the scientific side of um, the topics that link in with all of the roles of the operating department practitioner. Regarding clinical placements, we have we cover a number of placements. As you can see on the map, we cover Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, Lincolnshire and Northamptonshire. Um, once a student is offered a place after interview, um, that student will be offered the place at the university and they will also know immediately which um, area that they will be based in and they will be having consistent periods on that placement. Um, we ask students at uh, prospective students at interview where they would like um, their first and second choices um, would be for um, their clinical placements. Obviously, we can never guarantee anything, but we try our hardest to actually ensure that we cover, um, you know, and try and give you your first um, choice ideally. Um, across these Midlands, you can see it's a, we, it is a rather large area and there's a number of big hospitals that we use. And what with you spending 65% of your time in the clinical placement, we actually advise all our students to live near placement because this fits in much better with um, the times and the hours that you will work in clinical placement. What we do offer, because obviously we understand that um, some of the areas are, are a distance from um, the university. When students are in university, we also have guaranteed accommodation at the University of Leicester. This is heavily subsidised by the operating department practice um, units programme be purely because we know that obviously students will have to pay for their accommodation where they are living near placement. Our students are all embedded into the theatre team, so they actually feel as if they are part of the team um, and they are your experiences with real patients. So you're getting real experience on a day to day prep, um, day to day um, practice. We are ensuring that you are prepared for qualification so that the day you qualified, you are ready to practice as an ODP and we have live clinical um, assessments that are there to ensure that you you're practicing and um, progressing and your feedback off after your clinical assessment is immediate and also during your assessment process. So 
so supporting you how do we support you we obviously understand that this is going to be a big journey for people and um especially working in an operating theater i think can affect people in different ways and we believe that academic pastoral and clinical support cannot be separated and therefore we provide it all within the department as i said earlier we work very closely with our clinical partners and are there to support um, students both academically but also in a pastoral way um, the university we can point um, students to other areas within the university but our students are always encouraged to actually come and spend time and talk to their personal tutors and our head of program um, all personal tutors have planned tutorial time within each module so we see our students on a very regular basis um, to offer them support and guidance and advice at all times and then we also have specialist support referrals if they are necessary and um, processes to follow one thing that all ODP students are eligible for is the NHS learning support fund if you are somebody who is eligible for um, student finance, once your student finance is in place, you can actually apply to the NHS Learning Support Fund, which will give a training grant of £5,000 per academic year. Um, as you can see on the slide, there's parental support of £2,000 if you have at least one dependent child under 15 or under 17 years if registered with special educational needs. You also can get money back for excess travel and temporary accommodation costs. And while you're on, whilst you're on um, your practice placement, obviously there's always rules and exemptions that apply, which if you are successful in, in joining um, the University of Leicester will all be explained to you. And students experiencing financial hardship, there's an exceptional support fund available um, to them. Employability. We have a 100% employment record. Every one of our students that qualifies um, and is registered with the Healthcare Professionals Council all get jobs. Um, we have there are always ODP vacancies in the NHS and the independent health sector, as it says there, remain very high. And the role of an ODP is a very well developed career ladder and more and more opportunities are opening for ODPs to progress within the future. So the ODP role, they work in the operating department and there are three key roles which are anaesthetics, surgery and recovery. Anaesthetics um, is where the ODP will support the anaesthetist in whatever type of anaesthetic is being given to a patient. Um, you will be there to support the patient as well as supporting your anaesthetist. In the surgical role, you will actually um, scrub and don um, the um, theatre clothing um, to actually assist and um, support the surgeon whilst they are carrying out surgical procedures and also a role that we call circulating where you are there to support the scrub practitioner whilst they are assisting with the surgeon. And then there's the recovery of a patient post um, operating procedure, post anaesthetic. All of these three roles all involve caring for a patient. We all have a natural care in nature. Um, I do apologise, that's gone back. Um, and um, our role also involves working with technical equipment. All equipment is shown to all members of staff and students and you are taught specifically how to use that equipment and advised and supported by a qualified mentor. You have interprofessional working where we work with um, other members. So you can work alongside midwives, nurses, radiographers, um, obviously surgeons, anaesthetists, medical students. So it's a very good relationship working with a lot of different um, healthcare professionals throughout your role. You become a registered practitioner with the Healthcare Professionals Council and you are an essential member of the operating department team. So opportunities on the course, we have a wide variety of clinical experience available. 
um, which includes both elective and emergency surgical fields. And also there's opportunities to visit other departments dependent upon um, your hospital. Our placements are in very high ranked NHS organisations. And as said before, we have a well developed career ladder. You can go on to leadership within the operating department or actually within the hospital. You can go into the education sector. Um, there are different specialist roles in critical care. Um, there are a number of um, infection control roles um, pre pre assessment roles for um, seeing patients pre surgery. So more and more roles are developing. There's the chances in the future with a bit of experience, more experience as a, a registered practitioner to go into ad advanced roles and um, surgical first assistant, surgical care practitioners and um, physicians associates which cover either surgical side or um, the anaesthetic side. But one thing I need to um, reiterate is that these roles are not a doctor and the operating department practice Bachelor of Science is not a stepping stone to become a doctor, which is a common question that is asked. There's some comments that you can see there from our student perspective um, from current and these are all actually current ones. They've been updated, so comments you can see there. I have enjoyed the lectures in the course. I believe I have the best learning atmosphere possible. And we ask our students at the end of every study block to anonymously complete um, a survey um, regarding how they found and how they found the study block and the information that's given to them um, regarding the staff, regarding guest lecturers. And they're very open and honest within these. And these are where some of these comments have actually come from. So applying to Leicester. The application process is you apply through UCAS and then our shortlisting takes place based on the academic entry criteria and um, a prospective student's personal statement. We always read um, the personal statement and do actually take that into account as regards to the application process. As you can see, the entry criteria is um, three A levels at BBC or 112 UCAS points or equivalent. We also offer um, a accept, sorry, BTEC courses and also the access to higher education course. We ask for GCSEs um, of three at grade C or four or above, and they must be two of those must be in English and maths. And um, for our international students, we accept the IELTS course, but again, that has to be 6.5 or above. Um, DBS checks are mandatory and also every student has to have occupational health clearance. DBS checks are there to check um, the register, the um, police register to see whether you have a criminal record or not. We welcome mature applicants. We don't just accept um, students direct from school and we have a number of mature ap applicants on our programme currently. And the biggest and most important thing is having a passion for working in the operating department. It's such a specialised role and one that we're all very, very proud of. Once um, you have been shortlisted, you are then offered um, and invited to come for an interview. We have a process of multi mini interviews um, and they're quite relaxed um, and also then a um, interview with two of the team. If you are successful in this, you would then be made an offer with the clinical placement location noted as part of your offer and it will be a conditional offer generally. We then have an offer holder day at um, the placement partner. So we will have um, the chance for um, the student, the um, applicants to actually visit the hospitals. And also we have a pre-entry administration day, which gives everybody a chance to meet each other within the cohort before you actually start your first day. And it just gives you a bit of background information. And at this that point, we will actually give you your three year um, program so that you know where you're going to be for the whole of your three years and when all your um, study blocks and clinical placements are. 
So, becoming a citizen of change, which is something that the University of Leicester itself is um, advocating, and we're looking for students who've got good people skills, the ability to care. The ability to care is very important. The understanding of the NHS core values, which are easy to find if you look on um, the NHS websites, and enthusiasm to pursue a career in the operating department, having that passion um, you know, we can see that passion when when people come for interview. The ability to adapt to the operating department environment. It is an unusual environment and you will meet some characters um, and it's just all about learning to adapt to those different areas. We obviously require you to have good communication skills. You have to communicate not only to the staff that you're working with, but most importantly with your patient. And we have a number of different patients and different patient needs. Obviously, this is a professional course, so we expect all of our students to have professional attributes. You know, we've got to behave in a professional manner to then actually enable to become um, registered once qualified. And we'd like all of our students to be reliable and to have a hard working attitude to succeed. This is a photo of our most recent um, graduates. As you can see, this is an, you know, these are our typical applicants. We have a wide variety of backgrounds and um, we have international students, a mixture of ages. Um, people who've changed careers, so some of the mature students have done something else and decided they want a new um, career um, change, or even people that have been doing different roles within healthcare and then want to progress on to become an ODP. <clears throat> so why ODP at Leicester? We're very proud of our programme, we're very proud of our role, and we aim to um, be the, the best at training, the best ODPs that are ready to practice from the day that they qualify. We have expert staff, we have expert led clinical placements, which then equals expert students and expert ODPs of the future. As you can see there, if you've got any other queries that you'd like to email regarding um, our um, email address is um, at the bottom of the screen. Um, and you can contact us um, for other information if you require so. That just shows you a bit of um, a few pictures of obviously a student studying, which we like to see some of the areas around Leicester and um, photos of um, the university. The university itself it is um, not a huge campus. It's a nice friendly campus and um, we've got a couple of areas um, with the campus and um, it's it's just a lovely place to be. It's a nice place to be as a member of staff and it certainly is as a student. And that's me wrapping up if anyone has any questions. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much for that. We do have uh, a few questions that have come in actually. Um, so the first question we've got is, does an international student who lives in the UK already and already did a master's course still need the IEL uh, TS? Um, generally, we do require it um, because we've had other applicants that are international that have actually got other programmes like yourself as masters. But yes, we do ask for that. Um, or do they have any other equivalent? Um, English and maths qualifications. It might be worth actually emailing us and then we could discuss it further if, if you'd wish. Fantastic. And um, we have another question of what is the sort of average day look like for an ODP student? Wow, for an ODP student. Um, if you're in university, you st dependent on the day. Mondays were a bit kind. We'll let you start at 10 um, and the finishing day from Monday to Thursday is four o'clock. So it's 10 till four on a Monday, uh, nine to four on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. And then Friday, we're kind. We we'll give you Friday afternoons off. So you're in from nine until half past 12, between half 12 and one. 
Um, in clinical placement, generally shifts start either half past seven or eight o'clock and generally are until 6 p.m. We don't expect any of our students to do any nights until their second year um, and an average day. Wow, it depends which area you're on. If you're on anaesthetics, it's um, working with the anaesthetic ODP and the anaesthetist and you uh, will learn how to check all the, of the anaesthetic equipment and prepare um, the anaesthetic room for the patients that are coming. Then obviously you will be hands on with the patients, communicating with them, um, alleviating their fears and then obviously be involved in the anaesthetic process and giving the anaesthetic, uh, the anaesthetic supporting the anaesthetist, giving the anaesthetic um, and obviously then supporting the patient throughout their surgical procedure. If you're on the surgical side or on your surgical placement, you will either be um, scrubbing at the operating table with your mentor or a qualified um, member of staff and then we'll learn how to actually assist the um, surgeon um, and you know looking after the instruments and swabs equipment um, or circulating on the floor where you're opening um, packaging so that it's you're opening sterile equipment actually onto the tray for the scrub practitioner and then likewise if you're on um, in recovery it's a matter of um, you get a lot more one-to-one -one with your patients um, you know where you're recovering them from an anaesthetic and alleviating people's fears and you know giving them care and you know supporting them in every which way you can um, I'd say that every day is different because you never know what's going to happen in an operating list and it depends which um, speciality you're working in so you'll see a number of different different things but it's it's exciting. Amazing got a few questions uh, coming through but I just had a thought that should we move it back to the slide with the with the email on just in case oh, yeah. uh, any students didn't okay, catch it. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. Now, at least that's 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 there ready to see. So we've got okay. another question uh, come in asking if there is a payment plan for international students. Oh, that's one that I actually couldn't answer. Um, the best thing to do is to contact the central admissions team. Um, I can't think what it, what their address is off by heart. Um, if you go on to the university of Leicester website and go through to admissions there should be the admissions email on there and the central admissions team are the ones that are the experts when it comes to um, funding and payment plans. Brilliant thank you. Um, uh, we've got a question asking what's some advice or I guess top tips um, would you give to students who are thinking about uh, studying these subjects at university but obviously not quite there yet so advice or top tips for students who are wanting to go in and, and study these subjects but are not not at that point yet not at that point yet um ideally if you're studying science uh, you know science subjects at um uh, school or college that's ideal um when you're writing your personal statement, obviously, you know, we do look for things if people are, are aware of, of ODP. So, you know, do a bit of research, have a look out there. It's um, we very often like in the um, the subject of, of operating department practices as the best career that nobody's ever heard of, because a lot of people haven't heard of us. Um, just trying to think what else to say to uh, to be prepared. If you've got any work experience, um, you know, where you've been involved in caring for anybody, um, you know, that's that's always something to prepare yourself. But I'd, I'd say Google's your best friend. <laughs> have a good look at Google. Have a look at um, you can look at you can look at certain pages of the College of Operating Department practice pages. There's some that are obviously open to um, external people. There's also the um, so oh, AFPP. Um, I can't think of their. Um, if you put AF. PP into Google, you again, that's um, the Association of Perioperative Practice, which actually um, there are nurses and ODPs that are um, involved within that and that are members. But there's areas of those websites that you can actually access um, without being a member. 
um, and they will give you a lot of um, in, information and guidance. Brilliant. Um, I've got another question come in to just ask what support is there for students who are sort of, I guess the question is asking what, what support is there for students finding a placement, but I'd quite be interested to know to add on what support is there for students while they're also on placement as well. All right. Um, to, for, we actually find you the placement because we have the um, placements with already organised with our, our local hospitals. Um, support that each hospital has a clinical placement manager who leads looking after um, students. So students can always go to the clinical placement managers. The clinical placement managers that we work with, you know, I'm not being biased, they're all absolutely fantastic um, and are very approachable. Um, in placement, you can also go to your mentor. Um, and likewise, we always ask that the university, us as personal tutors are involved as well. We actually say to our students when they go out into clinical placement, we don't forget that you exist. You know, it's not just, oh, right, you're off in clinical placement now. You know, we care about our students greatly and we like you to keep in touch with us. So, you know, it, it's it's a three way street for want of a better description. We actually like students to, you know, communicate with both ourselves and their um, placement um, coordinators. Does that answer their question? That's wonderful, thank you. And that is that is the last question we've, we've got today, so I'll hand it over back to you. Lovely. Well, I'd just like to say to um, those of you that, that, you know, have been online, thank you very much for listening to um, me talk about my my role yeah, um, myself and all of the team are so passionate about operating department practice. Um, we'd love you to come and join us at the University of Leicester. We are striving to be the best in the country. Um, we all think we're wonderful and we, we get very good feedback from our students. And please don't hesitate to contact us at ODP Education at lea.ac.uk if you have any other questions. Please don't think any no question is a stupid question or a silly question. I personally am happy to answer any question that is posed to us. And again, thank you very much.